one. Hi, I'm Mike Morales here for a special edition of Sipping Off the Cuff. Uh, we are doing our tequila tryouts and tonight you are going to be uh, entertained and taken through a, a sipping off the cuff with that gentleman over there who is... I am Matt Metris here in Rochester, New York. Uh, and tonight we are going to be doing Fortaleza Añejo. Oh, why did you pick that one? Just out of curiosity. Um, I'm a big fan of Fortaleza. Uh, I just uh, two months ago spent a week at their distillery. Uh, oh, good. You went. You went yeah. to the distillery. That's a yeah. I've been down there twice. Uh, it's a great program down there. They put on for bartenders and and that sort of thing. And they really put you through the rigor and harvesting agave and working with the Hona and distilling and unloading ovens and really doing every single aspect of uh, producing tequila. So. I, I keep asking for the uh, position of batidor, which, which is actually the guy who jumps in the in the in the wooden vat and starts the the process of fermentation. I want that job, man. Right, it's a simple bit of wire out of it. Uh... Yeah, they don't do it anymore. By the way, they you know that's Good. one of that one of the few things that that they have not done. Yeah, um, I was uh, fortunate enough to be down there on uh, for the first batch. Um, of Fortaleza, and did you get a chance to meet Guillermo? Have you met him? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, he's he, a great uh, guy, man. What a great. character! Yeah, absolutely. He he, uh, he he spent a lot of time with us. It was me and another bartender down there, and uh, I think he was bored or something. So we went drinking every night. But you know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what else is there to do, right? You know the tequila. Yeah, right? The tequila is taking care of itself, right? It's resting, it's fermenting. What are you going to do, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, so, um, what glassware are you going to use tonight for? Uh, I have a uh, Rydal tequila glass. Oh, good deal. All right. How do you like them so far? Do you do? You... I, I don't use them as often as I should. Probably, I had a second one and it broke while I was washing it, uh, which is probably that's, that's how I break them. Yeah, exactly. And it's like twenty bucks a pop. It's you know so. So I use a Glen Karen a lot of the time, uh, but I use this on special occasions. Okay, okay. You the Glen Karen that you're using is it is it this one? Is it the whiskey one? Yeah, yeah. It looks yeah, just like. One? Okay. All right. Good. Good deal. Excellent. So go right ahead, man. Walk me through it. All right. So we got our Fortaleza Añejo. Tell me about the um, tell me about the cork. So the cork is uh, an actual cork, let's see, make sure you can see it here, and there's an acrylic piña uh, that's glued to the top of this cork. They're hand glued, um, did 300 of them one morning. Uh, oh, wow. And, yeah, <laughs> you, get a, you get a little high off the glue fumes while you're in this tiny nice. space do it. Uh, but they pour an acrylic mold that looks like the piña and they paint it green and white. Um, they actually paint it white first, no, they paint it green first, and then they paint it white and they sand it off, and that's how you get the two tone that looks pretty accurately like a pina. Yeah, that's that's really cool. I know. I know when we first saw that, we were just all falling all over ourselves with that. And it, show the bottle. Show show the. Yeah, absolutely. Here's the bottle, and uh, there is a little picture of the agave fields up on the top here. Mm -hmm. uh, Fortaleza logo on the blanco and the reposado. They have different pictures. One of the Tahona pit and one of the distillery. Um, this is lot AL25, and one thing that's unique about Fortaleza is that um, they're not always sourcing their agaves from the same place, mm -hmm. so there can be variations in taste from lot to lot, uh, so that's, you know, one thing to look out for with them. Uh, Gnome 1493, uh, but that's the only product they produce there besides Tequila Los Abuelos, which is the same stuff. Uh, just the Mexican label. Yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, how long is it aged? Do you know? Um, I, it doesn't say on the bottle. Uh, yeah, because I, I was kind of looking at their website, and I can't. I, I'm not exactly sure. The information. Let's see here: distillation, pot proof, fermentation, sugars, water source. Uh, hand blown aging 18 months in American oak. Okay. Yeah. So, um, it's, it's a fairly, show me the color, show, show the, yeah. show what to show your sample on there. It's a fairly light, um, 
Absolutely. You know, this is Absolutely. this is probably a very a a very used barrel. Mm hmm. Yeah, absolutely. It's kind of like a like a like a darker straw color, I think. Yeah, definitely. So, what are you getting out of it? What kind of smells? What kind of aromas? So, there's definitely a sweetness right off the top, and it still retains even for being 18 months. It has a bit of an agave aroma to it, which you don't always see, uh, you know, with aged stuff. I think a lot of that has to do with the the fermentation process after after they crush it with a taona they uh don't they actually not only do they scoop the juice into the the vat but they they actually take the fibers as well right uh if they are using fibers they're not using much because we i had to scoop the bagasso out of the taona pit and put it in a truck oh so, really <laughs> so, uh, yeah so, so i know not, they're not using all of it he's not using so he, he may be yeah. using you know, a little bit of it then. Yeah, they might be, but I don't think they're fermenting with the fibers. Okay. Um, they tell okay. me that they take them out back in the field and compost them, basically. Mm, okay. Uh, they do you like you mentioned, a Tahona wheel, which is not super common, um, but I do think it makes a huge difference in the, uh, the production time that it takes. Uh, if I remember correctly, they do 3,000 pounds of piñas a day in the Tahona wheel. Which is not all that much. Um, and I spent a day down the street at another distillery, and they did that 3,000 pounds in about 20 minutes. So, with their shredder with roller. The shredder. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's extremely labor intensive. Absolutely. There's a team of five or six guys working all day long, start at five in the morning, and uh, work through like one or two in the afternoon. So, it was pretty wow. labor intensive. Okay, so what else are we what else are we getting out of out of the uh, the aroma? Uh, we got some oak and on like some vegetation. But yeah, the sweetness is definitely overpowering. It, it has a very distinct aroma and and flavor. I mean, mm -hmm. you can be anywhere, um, and. And no, right off the bat, even blind, uh, we were, uh, I know I, uh, in one of the contests that I was a judge, you could, after so many tequilas and you can still taste it and you just, you just knew that that's, that's what that was. You know, it has, it's a very distinctive aroma and flavor. So, um, so take a sip, tell me what, what, what you get on the, uh, on the intake. So that sweetness is the first thing that pops. It's really thin. It really moves around in your mouth really well. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's not super simple. It's got some heat to it, like some black pepper, um, almost like some baking spices, like a cinnamon. Um, and on the end there, it's almost like an artificial bubblegum flavor, like a Bazooka Joe kind of thing. Really? Yeah, so it, and is that is that common with all the other varietals also? Do you um, have you have you noticed that with all the other ones? I have not noticed that in the other two. So it's it's basically just in the añejo, right? Yeah, as far as I I can tell, I haven't had the reposado in a while, uh, but I did drink a lot of the silver when I was down there, and um, I don't recall that flavor in the silver. That silver is amazing, though. I, Absolutely, yeah. When when we had the very first lot, it was all that he had. He was still resting stuff in 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 the cava, and just the blanco alone floored us. Just yeah. floor. I. It's one of those. It's one of those experiences you just you just never forget, you know. And it, and it was it was really special, and and not just because he was there, but because just everything, you know, the ambiance, the the place is a working museum. Yeah, the cave is super cool too. Yeah, yeah. And I guess they're not they're not aging in the cave anymore. They turned that into a bar. Oh yeah. Uh, and they have another warehouse somewhere that they're doing the aging in, but it's really cool ambiance in there now with a, with a bar and they do tastings in there and that sort of thing. So it is kind of hard to see though. I mean, I remember it was, <laughs> it was pretty yeah. dark, so it's not like you can you can tell a color or anything like that. Yeah, no, they did add a little bit of lighting, but it is pretty hard to see in there. So what what else uh, what's what's the takeaway with with this añejo what you know what romanced you 
you know, for uh, if you have, you know, what is it you want to relate to people who may have never have had Fortaleza, maybe can't afford it or haven't been able to get it in their area? Sure. Um, it's definitely, it is more a more expensive product. Mm -hmm. uh, I think around here, the Añejo sells for about 60 or $70 a bottle. And, you know, being in upstate New York, we get a little bit of extra uh, cost on all of our bottles. And, and you, know, you know what? That's still not a, not a bad deal, honestly. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's definitely worth it. You can tell the finish is almost, there's almost no uh, ethanol burn at all. It, it just goes right down. You can drink it and continue drinking it without any sort of burn on your, on your throat. It's, um, the smoothness of it is, is really unique as far as a lot of products go. Um, like we talked about, the Tahona, I think, makes a huge difference. Mm -hmm. um, and it really just all around is a solid product. Where did you say you, 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 did you taste that Bazooka Joe flavoring, or is it more of an aroma that you get? I think it's a mix of the two. I can definitely smell it in there. I think it's part of the, you know, when it hits your tongue, some of that aroma you get in there too. It may be more powerful in the aroma. Mm -hmm. What do you think that, what, what do you attribute that to? I mean, you've seen the whole process. You know that there are, there, there are no additives when it comes to this tequila. No, absolutely. I think it's, um, I mean, it, I don't know why it's in the Añejo and not in the Repo, per se, mm -hmm. um, but it does seem like it would come from the aging process. There are some chemical compounds that sort of masquerade that sweetness as a, that sort of same aroma. Um, so it's really, I don't, know, I don't know what to attribute it to. Okay. Okay, but we should, but, the, you know, it's something to, to definitely keep an eye out for, right? It, or, yeah. or something that'll really just come up and... Um, if there's one thing that you wanted uh, folks to know, um, like for instance in Rochester, where would you find Fortaleza? And you can mention, you know, whatever whatever outlets there are out there that that carry it. A, a lot of our uh, a lot of our audience is, is like everywhere. You know, we, we have them from all over the world and and even locally. You know, obviously the United States is is our largest um, watcher and consumer of, of tequila. So. When somebody from Rochester says, hey, man, where do I get it? What do you tell them? Yeah, absolutely. So we carry it uh, at the restaurant where I work, which is Selena's Mexican restaurant. Okay. When I took over uh, the ordering there, which was about a year ago, the first, very first thing I did was add Fortaleza to the menu. Um, <laughs> and, yeah, and that was before I even been Talk down clap. there. And, and that sort of thing. But uh, it is... Not super common to find retail-wise. Um, I know there's a couple larger liquor stores, uh, like Lisa's Liquor Barn here, I think, has it. Mm -hmm. For the most part, it's not super common to see on a retail shelf. Um, so our, be our best bet is to, is to visit um, your restaurant. Yeah. Visit Salinas, come down, I'll pour you some Fortaleza. Um, we, we just redid our tequila menu last week, so we have a lot of new exciting stuff on there. Oh yeah, which ones? Which ones did you add to it? Uh, so we added uh, Pesote. Oh, uh, good. Calle Viente Tres. Um, that's uh, another one that's pretty rare to find also. Absolutely, yeah. I, I've, uh, honestly, I've never had it. I, I would love to try it, but um, I've interviewed Sophia Dobe Sophie Dobeck. But we've we we've never been able to get it here in Texas for some reason. I've never been able to find it. Yeah, I was able to order some before we got it at the restaurant. I was able to order some online and have it shipped, uh, and it was not bad. It was it was like twenty dollars a bottle plus oh, the ship. No kidding! Wow, yeah. that's really it's good. Really inexpensive, and they're on Yeho. It's a little bit on the sweeter side, but it, the whole lineup is pretty good, especially considering the price. Um, but yeah, we've really been. Uh, Focusing some of our new products, we have Dos Armadillos, uh, which we just added to the menu. Um, what else is new? Don Fluano, uh, Arete. Um, wow. Uh, T1 we just added, which, uh, as you know, was the uh, craft tequila pick for that uh, USA Today thing. Yep. Um, yeah, you, you just went up and down that whole list and just, yeah, exactly. kind of, that's what, you know, it's funny because a lot of people, I was involved in, in, in curating that list for the curator. 
Um, and it's funny how many people have just went bananas over that list and started just asking for it, you know, at their distributor or if they work for a yeah. distributor or a restaurant, they just go up and down. That's like everybody's wish list, exactly. you know, and, and I, it, it sucked because I had to stop at 20 cause I could have kept going. Oh yeah. Right. And it was, it was tough the way it was, you know, set up for voting, you know, like yeah. G4 split each other and that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, it, it was, um, it was, uh, it could have been better, you know, yeah. but hey, been, it is what it is. You know, at least it, it, it put the word out and, and guys like you are, are picking it up. What, what does a, 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 now when you serve Fortaleza at the restaurant, what do you serve it in? Uh, if it's uh, just a neat pour, we have, uh, we use brandy snifters. Okay. Uh, we did have these glasses for a very short period of time, but like we talked about, they break very, very easily, and that was unsustainable as far as uh, reordering them all the time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the brandy snifters seem to work out well. You still keep, keep your hands off it so it doesn't get overheated, and you can get a little bit of the nose. Um, so. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, anything else you want to add before we sign off? Um, no, thank you for taking the time to do this. This is awesome. Hey, thank you for, for you know, stepping in, throwing your hat in the ring, you know. Um, I, I've been to upstate New York. It's beautiful up there. It's big wine country up there. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, Finger Lakes wine region is huge. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I spent a little bit of time, about 10 days, I think, um, a few years back on the Finger Lakes area and did a, did a wine tour at one of the wineries. Really impressed with the... You know, you have a, I, I guess at, at the restaurant you have a wide wine selection as well, I'm, I'm assuming? Uh, it's not actually that huge. We don't sell a ton of wine. Uh, people either want margaritas or uh, tequila or beer, really. Is, is, that, so, is that how you serve most of your, most of your tequilas and margaritas? And, and yeah, we, we have a house, house margarita that we can't keep in stock, basically. We're just constantly wow. selling and selling and selling. So, wow. Yeah, it's, a, it's good. Um, awesome. It, well, yeah. they, in uh, in that case, you know, next time we're we're out in Rochester, we're definitely going to come and, and see Matt, see the see Matt Metris uh, at Salinas in Rochester. Uh, I'm Mike Morales here in San Antonio. That gentleman over there is Matt Metris in Rochester, New York. You've been watching Sipping Off the Cuff, a special edition of our tequila tryouts with Matt from uh, New York. Thanks again for watching, and as we like to say always, sip.